Welcome. At some point you may end up in a situation where you want to compare your data against data from others. Yet for some reason or another you might not be able to get access to the original datasets. Then it can be helpful to extract the data points directly from the published plots. The open source tool Webplot Digitizer can be used for this. As an example we will extract a couple of data points from this scanned report here. The links to both of them are in the video description. As a start, take a screenshot of one of the plots you want to work with. On the web page, you can either download the program from one of the links at the top right, or you can start the web version with the launch button. The page now shows an example image at the center. In the top right is a zoomed in view around the cursor location. To its left are a couple of buttons to adjust the view of the main image. In the top left is a button labeled File. This can be used to either load new images, save your project, or load a previous project. Let's load the image either via the menu on the top left or just by dragging the image on the workspace. A menu pops up that asks you for the type of plot. In our case it's just a simple 2D XY plot. After hitting the Axis Align button we will be asked to identify the plot axis by adding four points. The first two points are for the X axis and the second two points are for the Y axis. After clicking Proceed we can locate the individual points. Since the points can be adjusted easily, I'm just clicking somewhere in the vicinity of a known location. For instance, the x1 point starts here at the origin, the x2 point is set to 0.3. Same for the y-axis, start at the origin and then to 1. After all points are placed, they can be selected by clicking on them. The active points are shown in green, while all the others are shown in red. The points can be moved around with the arrow keys. This also sends us a detailed view on the active point. I try mostly to aim at the line centers. When you are satisfied with the location of the points, click on the right hand side on the complete button. In the next menu the individual axes are defined by entering the locations of the four points. Afterwards we hit OK. On the right hand side are now two categories for the data extraction. By default it starts in the manual extraction with the add point mode active. As an example let's take the empty boxes as a dataset we want to extract. Again I'm just clicking in the vicinity of the boxes. Then I can select the adjust point mode by either clicking on the button or using the shortcut in the brackets. Now clicking at one of the points I can move them around with the arrow keys just as before. When we are happy with their placement the data can be saved. On the left hand side the view data button opens a menu that shows the coordinates of the points. Here on the top right there are some options to sort the datasets and below are some formatting options. You can see here in my case that the decimal point is a comma. This depends on the language chosen in the browser which for me is German. Changing the language to English and reload the page shows the decimal points instead. Just keep in mind when the page is reloaded one needs to set up the plots again so make sure to save the project first. The data can now download it as a CSV file or you can directly copy it to the clipboard. You could also select the lines here in the overview window and hit Ctrl C to copy them. Typically I copy the data, paste it into a text file and adjust it a little. In this case I would like to have the comma replaced with a decimal point. Using search and replace functionality I can search for all the commas and replace them with decimal points. Now I want to replace the semicolon with the following space to a comma as a column separator. To record the next data series just hit clear data and extract the next set. Manually adding points is certainly a good way for scatter plots. I would also use that for the dashed lines here, for example by positioning a point at the center of each dash. Again locating them in the vicinity of the center and adjusting them later. For the solid lines it makes sense to use the automatic extraction functionality. The search space can be limited by drawing a mask on the plot. On the right hand side we can select pen and start drawing a mask on the plot. With the slider the width of the line can be adjusted. The eraser allows us to remove parts or the whole mask at once. After we have selected a useful line width, we can now draw over the solid line pieces. Next, the foreground color needs to be specified. This is the color in which the line is drawn that we want to extract from. In our case it's just black. Now we can hit run and we see a lot of points have been drawn on the plot. The number of points can be adjusted by changing the pixel step size here with delta x and delta y. For instance let's try 15. Hit run again. These fewer points look a little bit better, maybe we can even go to 20. Yeah, much better. Still there's a couple of points that are somehow off. So we go back to the manual extraction mode and hit delete points. Then we can just click on the points we want to have removed. Be careful when you click, the points in the vicinity of the cursor will be removed, so it can lead to unexpected results. Some points need to be added at the beginning where all the lines overlap, which I would do manually. Again adjust all the points and download the results as before. Now let's have a brief look at this plot, which has logarithmic axis. We start again with the axis align and locate our four points. The x point I start at 0.008 and then go to 0.3. For y now I start at 50 and go to 900. So this also highlights that we do not need to have the x and the y axis cross in the origin. Important is just to have known points to define the axis. Now hitting complete we can use the checkboxes on the right to indicate that this axis is a log scale axis. And then the appropriate point values need to be entered. 
On the axes are also a couple of tick marks which have no labels. Since we have defined our axes now, we can easily figure out what their label should be. For instance, we add manually a point here on the y-axis between the 50 and the 80. Clicking on view data, we can see that this point is at 60 degrees Celsius. Please leave a like if you found this video helpful. Otherwise, see you in the next one. Bye.